Well, glory to God. How good it is to be here on Wednesday evening. Amen. Amen. Uh, just want to remind everybody now that next Wednesday evening we will not have services here. I will be in revival with the New Way Baptist Church next week uh, out from Nashville. Uh, this is one of my revivals that got canceled during the season of COVID. And uh, so uh, we'll be there. In fact, we, we'll start Sunday night, so we won't have services here Sunday night or Wednesday night uh, next week. Uh, we'll be in a new way. So be praying for that, that revival, that it will get to be a revival. Amen? Amen? We're living in a time when we need a God-sent, devil-chasing, spirit-filled, Holy Ghost revival, not only in our church, but in every church. And we about had it Sunday morning. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and uh, we'll get started. Father, we love you so much, and thank you for the opportunity you give us to worship. And uh, as we have gathered, Lord, uh, we just pray that you would bless uh, in the singing, and then in the time of the study of God's Word, and then as we pray for those who stand in need of a touch. Have your way in our church, in our lives. And in our community, that people will be able to see Jesus in all we say and in all that we do. For we make our prayer in His name. Amen. Brother Steve. All right, good evening. Good evening. If you will, take your hymnal and turn to page 483. Jesus. Everybody take your Bible and turn with me to the book of John, John's Gospel, chapter number three. Third chapter of the book of John. And uh, I want us to look at uh, the first 16 verses of Scripture as our text verse for our study. And we'll continue our study, great words of the gospel, words you don't hear too much anymore, 
And tonight we'll begin our study on regeneration. And if we get through with it, praise God. And if we don't, we'll cut it in half and pick up next time we're here. All right, let's look at this together. The Bible says there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And the same it came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou dost except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? I believe the Lord's got a sense of humor. Amen. <laughs> Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, You must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst thou not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth? So it is with every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and saith unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knoweth not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that cometh down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I pray that God would add his blessings to the reading of that precious scripture. Regeneration. <clears throat> By regeneration, or what some calls the new birth, uh, we mean that act of the Holy Ghost whereby he communicates the divine life to the sinner, thus making the sinner a child of God. The new birth is the key doctrine to every other truth revealed in the Word of God. Now to understand the doctrine is to open the door to an understanding of every other Bible doctrine. In professing church today, in every denomination there are two classes of members. <clears throat> those who have been born again and who are therefore members of the true church of the living God and those who's never been born again. Those are the only two classes. I like the way J. Vernon McGee classifies those two classes. He says, you're either a saint or you ain't. That's what he said. And there's a lot of truth in that. Now, I want us to look at for just a few moments what the new birth is not. 
what the new birth is not. I want you to know, first of all, that it's not a natural birth. It's not a natural birth. Look at verse 4 through verse 6 again. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Now if you stop, if you stop really and think about it, we look at this and we say, Well, Nicodemus had pretty much lost his mind to ask the Lord a question like this. But if you stop and you think about where he is, what he believed, and and what he understood, and, and looking at, at the Scripture from the light of his understanding, he didn't know what Jesus was talking about. I mean, all he could think about was a baby being born into this world. And so Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he's old? He said, Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? You see, he's looking at things through the natural eyes. Too many times we look at things through natural eyes. Why? Because we live in the natural body. We live in the physical body. And we look at things through these physical eyes. And that's exactly what Nicodemus is doing. But now notice what Jesus said. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Now the truth of the matter is that you and I did not see the light of day until we were born in a physical sense. Before we can begin to live spiritually and see things through spiritual eyes, we've got to be born spiritually. We've got to be born again. Now being born again is not, listen, is not a psychological experience. Modern theologians is taught that the new birth of God is complex. That it's complex. But the Bible don't teach that it's complex. It's not just about being religious. Too many people dwell on religion. And religion won't get you anywhere. I tell you what religion will carry you. It'll carry you to hell. Unless it's true and undefiled religion. So it's not about being religious. Because if it had been about being religious, there wasn't anybody any more religious than Nicodemus. He was a very religious man. And, uh, but he, he, he wasn't born again. I mean, look at verse 10. Jesus answered and saith unto him, unto Nicodemus, Art thou a master of Israel, and knoweth not these things? Are you a religious leader in Israel and you don't know what I'm talking about? Now, Nicodemus had a lot of intellectual belief. He really did. And there's a lot of people today that's got a lot of intellectual belief. But friends, it's more than just believing intellectually. He began his conversation with the Lord Jesus by saying, We know. Look at verse 2. Verse 2 says, uh, The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we what? We know. We know. So he, he had an intellectual belief. But knowledge is no substitute for the new birth. You can know about the new birth and never experience the new birth. You can hear about regeneration and never be regenerated. Now, the thing that I want you to see is that many have knowledge. If we were to turn our Bibles to the book of James, chapter 2, and look at verse number 19. You don't have to do that because I've already done it for you. But let me tell you what it says. It says, thou believest that there is one God. Thou believest. So one of the most important things that you can do is not just intellectually believe, but you got, I tell everybody, you got to have more than head knowledge. The knowledge has got to move from the head to where? The heart. That's exactly right. In James 2.19, the Bible says, uh, Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. There is one God. 
But then notice what the Bible says there. It says, but the devils believe also in fear and tremble. Uh, the devils also believe and they fear and tremble in the sight of God. So, so it's more than, than just an external uh, reformation. Uh, it's, there's one thing to believe with your head, but there's another thing to believe with your heart. Who could be more correct outwardly, if you stop and think about it, than Nicodemus was? He was a powerful religious leader, yet he was not born again. Over in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5, it talks about traitors and heady and high-minded people who are lovers of uh, pleasures more than lovers of God. Boy, that sounds like where we are today, don't it? Sounds like exactly where we're living today. Because there are people who are traitors. They tell you that they're right with God, but they're far from being right with God. There are people who are very heady, think well of themselves, there are people who are high-minded. There are people who love pleasure. Boy, that's a good one right there. There are people who love pleasures more than they love God. And that's sad. That's sad. So it's not a self-effort or good works then uh, that regeneration comes. Uh, we Baptists are good about quoting Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, eight and 9. Verse 8 and 9. The Bible says in those two verses of Scripture, for by grace, for by grace are you saved. Regeneration comes then by grace. For by grace are you saved. And then it tells you how that grace comes through what? Through faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. Well, what is faith? Faith is simply believing and trusting with the heart, not only the not only the head, but with the heart as well. Faith is forsaking all things and taking Jesus as Lord. That's exactly what faith is. So by grace are you saved through faith. And then the scripture makes it very clear, and that not of yourselves. That's one of the most important things that you and I can realize as children of God. We can't work enough to save ourselves. We can't put enough money in the offering plate to buy our salvation. Now don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not telling you not to give your offering, amen? <laughs> because that's just part of what we do. I mean, it operates the, the church and spreads the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ by bringing the tithe into the storehouse, the church of the living God. But let me tell you something. You can't buy your way into heaven. You can't work your way into heaven. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of, uh, and not of yourself. The Bible says, and it is a gift of God. Well, we're about to hit gift-giving season. Gift-giving season. You know, we, we, we're about to hit Christmas time. And, and so we're about to hit that season. The greatest gift that was ever given was the gift of regeneration, the new birth through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. And then, it, then the writer makes it very clear. Not of works. Not of works, lest any man should boast. But I'm not going to leave out verse 10 like we usually do. Because once we've been saved by grace through faith, the Bible says here that we are his workmanship. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. And uh, so, friends, I tell everybody, and y'all have heard me tell you before, tell you again, we don't work because we are, uh, you know, to be saved, but we work because we are saved. Amen? That's why we work. Now, no amount of good works will produce the new birth. We are only to work out our salvation as God works in as God works in us. In Philippians chapter number two, verse twelve and thirteen, the Bible says this: Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. 
Now, a lot of people misuse that verse of Scripture. When the Bible tells you to work out your own salvation uh, with fear and trembling, that doesn't mean for you to punch your ticket to live your life just like you want to. Because if you live your life contrary to what the Bible is teaching and what Jesus is saying, then uh, you're not working out salvation. You're working out the way that you want to walk and the way that you want to talk. So we got to work out our salvation uh, with fear and trembling, being obedient to what God's Word says. For it is God that worketh in you both to will and to do His good pleasure. Now I'm going to tell you something. When I got saved by the grace of God, God changed my I want to be. I didn't want to be what I used to be. And uh, I, I still don't want to be what I was before I got saved by the grace of God. God changed my want to be. And He began to work in me uh, so that uh, I could be saved by His marvelous grace and be all that I could be for His glory. And that's the way we work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, knowing that it's God working in you both to do His will and His good pleasure. And you need to remember that. It's not by rites or ceremonies. I mean, I could give you the Lord's Supper till Jesus comes, and it wouldn't save you. It's not by rites and ceremonies. It's not uh, by baptism. I could stick you in a, a baptistry and uh, baptize you and keep you wet until your skin... Uh, well, we won't go there, all right? I mean, but that, I could. I could, I could just... I could keep you wet, but it, it wouldn't save you. Uh, confirmation, as good as it may be, won't save you. Uh, being a member of Gordon Avenue Baptist Church won't save you. It won't. Titus 3 5. Listen to what the Bible says. It says, Not by works of righteousness which we've done, but according to His mercy. He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Now the word water in John 3, 5 does not refer to the ordinance of baptism or baptismal regeneration. Now, baptism and church membership come after we've been born again, not before or as a means for producing uh, the new birth. As I've already told you, I could baptize you and keep you wet, but you wouldn't be saved. And you need to remember that. Uh, Titus 3.5 explains to us the significance of the water. Not by our works of righteousness, which we've done, but according to His mercy, He saved us by the washing of regeneration. There's our word. Regeneration. By the washing of regeneration. Now, how does He wash us by the power of regeneration? Let me tell you something. I can get outside and work and sweat. and uh, Whenever we were trying to get all of those old boxwoods pulled up in front of the house, uh, uh, man, I'd hook, to, uh, hook, hook those things to a chain. I was digging and scrapping in all that dirt. and uh, By the time I got through, I was a dirty man. And I wanted to find the shower just as quick as I could because that good of fresh water really washed off the dirt, especially whenever I put some of that good smelling soap that my wife buys me. Uh, I mean, it really, really did a good job. And I felt refreshed afterwards. Well, you see, that's in the physical sense. But now in the spiritual sense, it talks about the washing of regeneration. Well, now, what does God wash us and regenerate us with? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So the washing of generation, regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Now, that's touching on what all of regeneration is not. Secondly, what the new birth is. Let's talk about what it is for just a few moments. Uh, it is the new birth, or they set the second birth, a birth from above. Notice verse 3 through verse 7. Uh, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he can't see the kingdom of God. 
And I'm not going to read those other verses again because we've already read them. But it is being made alive from the dead and passing from death to life. By nature, you need to understand, if you're lost, you're dead. Well, now wait a minute, preacher. You're telling me if I'm lost, I'm dead. What are you talking about? I'm breathing. And... uh I'm able to touch and feel, and now you're telling me I'm dead. Well, I'm talking about spiritually. So by nature, man is spiritually dead. Now let me give you a scripture for that. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. The Bible says, and you hath he quickened. Now the word quickened means made alive. And you has he made alive. You has he quickened. And then it says, who were dead in trespasses and sins. So you see, we were spiritually dead because of our sin. But by the miracle of the new birth, we've been raised to the newness of life. In Romans chapter 6, verse 4, the Bible says, Therefore we are buried with Him by baptism into death. When you're baptized by water, it's symbolic of the dying of the old man. And when you're raised out of that water, uh, it's symbolic of the resurrection to a new life in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's just a symbol. And we do it because the Lord commanded us to do so. But it goes on to say that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So when we've been saved by the grace of God, things change. Things change. Now, it don't take long to see whether or not somebody is truly saved by the grace of God. If somebody comes forward and they tell you they've been saved by the grace of God and you don't see a change in their life, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. It is made, or we are, we are being made. A, our life is being made a partaker of the divine nature. The new birth is the commencement of life of God, the life of God Himself, Living within the human personality. The Bible says it's Christ in you. What? The hope of glory. Now, in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 4, the Bible says, Whereby are given unto us an excellent, great, and precious promise, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, God does not alter or patch up the old nature. Boy, I like that. I want to say that again. Praise God. God does not alter or patch up the old nature. He gives to you an entirely brand new New nature when He saves you by the grace of God. If you look at First uh, John cha or John chapter one verses eleven through thirteen, the last four words of verse thirteen is important. The Bible said He came to His own, and His own received Him not. But as many as received Him, to them gave He the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name which were born, listen, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. When you've been saved by the grace of God, you've been born of God. And it brings about a great change in your life. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. But then there's a third thing we see in these verses of Scripture. We see why the new birth is necessary. Why is the new birth necessary? Why do you think the new birth is necessary? To change us. Because to change us. To make the change in us. That's good. Somebody else. Anybody else got a clue? Yeah, one of us, to, keep us, keep us in God's will. to keep us in God's will. Both of those are good answers. 
But let me tell you why the new birth is necessary. Because Jesus said so. Because Jesus said so. And I mean, if Jesus said so, that's good enough. I mean, look at John 3.3. 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus said so. I better quit. I'm about to get excited and preach now. <laughs> Glory to God. Jesus said so. His word. It's His word because, listen, you and I are possessed by a fallen nature. It don't matter how well educated we may be. It doesn't matter how cultured we may find ourselves. Ephesians 2, verses 2 and 3 describes our condition in God's sight. It's a good time to stop, but I'm not going to because I'm so close to finishing this. I've got to finish this. Listen to what the Bible says there. Wherein, in time past, ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Who is that? Who is the prince and power of the air? No. No. Say it again. That's the devil. Listen to read the scripture. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Man, God's not the spirit and power of the air. Not in this particular scripture. Satan is. Because listen. Notice the latter portion of that particular verse. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. The spirit and power of the air is the spirit of disobedience. But then listen to what it says. Among whom also we had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as of That's the way we looked in God's sight. I mean, we were full... Of hell itself. Full of the devil. Because by nature we were spiritually dead. We were living in our fallen state. And in that fallen state you cannot please God. God is holy. And we are sinful. We could never have fellowship with Him. Look at verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is what? Flesh. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. We could never enter the kingdom of God in our fleshy nature. But when we possess a nature that's enjoyable to the kingdom of God, how great it is. Why the new birth is necessary? Because Jesus said so. And the last thing that I want you to see is how and when the new birth is experienced. How does it take place? When is it accomplished? How does it take place? By the power of the Holy Ghost. The new birth is not the work of a man. Man, I can preach and preach and preach and preach and never get you to where you need to be. I can't do it. I don't possess the power. Now, I tell people all the time, there's too many people trying to do God's part in this thing. Here lately, I don't know why it is, but God's just impressed on my heart that there is certain things that's just God things. And that's exactly what regeneration is. It's a God thing. It's a God thing. Now, God may use the preaching of the Word to do it, but it's God that's going to do the saving. He's going to draw by the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the operation of God's Holy Spirit whereby men can be saved. 
So how is the new birth accomplished? By the power of the Holy Ghost. Secondly, through the Word of God. The Holy Spirit sows the seed of the Word in the human heart and there, thereby imparts the new life. Now, if you go back to John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Look at verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. That's the Word that saves you. That's the Word that saves you. If you didn't have anything but those Scriptures right there, you've got God that can save you. If you didn't have nothing but John 3.16, you've got the Word that can make a difference in your life. So that by the drawing of the Holy Ghost, through the power of the Word, and then last of all, how does it happen in response to faith? Now, preacher, what are you talking about? Have you believed? Have you believed? You see, you've got to believe. Jesus said, he that lives and believes in me shall never die. And then he asked the question, believest thou this? Have you believed? Have you received Jesus Christ? And are you looking to him alone for salvation? It's the only way to be saved. It's the only way for regeneration to take place. And it's high time that we start using some of these biblical theological words again. Regeneration is important. And unless you're regenerated, then you're dead. What does it mean to be regenerated? To be born again. Jesus said, ye must be born again. Any comments? I have a comment. Sometimes we just need to hush and listen. Even when you're by yourself, like I, I have been at home, and when somebody is busy doing something, God puts his thoughts on my mind, and he says, just shut up and listen. <laughs> hush and listen. That's exactly right. Because it's the most miracle. I know people think, why is she calling her 